Welcome, 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 guys. My name is Tony. This is Living the Dream. We're on episode three. Uh, welcome back. Uh, sorry we're a little bit late. You know, it was the birthday weekend. Uh, also celebrated Father's Day with a few people that we know. Uh, so just had a, get a little more time before we could put this episode out. But today, we're going to do a few fun things. We are going to talk about a Crash Bandicoot game on the PlayStation 2 called Crash Tag Team Racing. It was pretty fun. Uh, we're also going to talk about NBA free agency and kind of what the, the world is uh, looking like currently. We're also going to talk about coffee, so you, you'll want to stick around for that. do want to throw out just a few quick things. First off, congratulations to the Toronto Raptors and the St. Louis Blues. First championship in both the Raptors NBA, the Blues NHL, first championship in the franchise histories. Um, rivalries aside, rooting interests aside, that's always pretty cool, uh, especially for cities like that. Um, so congratulations to you guys. War of the Spark, for all my magic nerds, I enjoyed it. Uh, might be one of my top four or five sets. I'm thinking about doing a video on that, but that's a real tough, tough video to do because, um, like, Mercadian Mass was, was one of my favorite sets, but that's also one of the sets I really, like, turned that corner and got serious in magic, so who knows. Uh, Modern Horizons, wow. So I did not talk much at all about it. Um, and I just want to say real quick that there is some good stuff in Modern Horizons. And uh, in Episode 4, we're going to talk about it a little bit. Um, I've already started getting my hands on some booster packs. Pulled a couple of those fancy new lands. It's a really cool set. So, you know, a little bit more than your regular booster pack, but not as much as the Masters. Um, and there's some cool stuff that comes with it, like the art cards. I got a foil soldier token out of one of them. So... Just kind of cool stuff, um, good pulls. It's a cool set. So definitely something that if you have um, the desire to, you know, kind of play the nerd lottery and um, also open those booster packs, it's a, it's a good set to do. And you can definitely buy the uh, three, what is it, the three-pack blister packs or whatever at uh, your local department stores. So otherwise, like I said, we got a few things today. Um, I hope you guys are excited. Still feeling a little bit under the weather. I was sick most of the weekend as well, so it was kind of tough. Uh, but, you know, I got to see Space Jam in theaters, so I just want to throw that out. Like, I got to see the original Space Jam replaying in a theater this past weekend, so that was pretty legit. Um, so that was pretty awesome. But otherwise, I'm starting to ramble. I kind of do that when I don't know what to do. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this show on the road, and uh, I don't know which clip I'm going to start with, but I hope you enjoy it. Here we go. It is time to talk about my favorite sport, basketball. So this was a really weird season. Uh, first off, congratulations to the Toronto Raptors. It's very tough to take away that the Raptors had, um, had a little bit of help from the injury bug. Let's just be honest. If you take off the best player, the third or fourth best player, and then the sixth best player or seventh best player, of any team that's won a championship, the story's going to get rewritten. But nonetheless, that was not on the Raptors. They beat who they were supposed to beat, and that's what we need to recognize. Um, it just it was a really good series when you take into account all the things that happened. But now we get to turn the page to one of the best times of the NBA year. I am, I am of course, excuse me, talking about free agency. So NBA free agency is going to be big this year. We got guys like Kemba Walker, Kyrie Irving, D'Angelo Russell, Jimmy Butler, uh, Kawhi Leonard, Kevin Durant, Klay Thompson, all of them expected to be free agents. And there's a lot of possibility for movement. But something that I want to discuss, um, and also as of the taping of this video, Anthony Davis has been traded to the Lakers. Uh, if you did not realize that was happening, 
I'm sorry. You just need to you need to watch a different sport. It was coming. I mean, this is all we've talked about for the past like six months, right? Anyways, um, so I did a little little research, a little thinking, and uh, rather than go all the way back to 2000, um, I'm gonna start this at 2011. But what I did was I went back and looked what were some of the top free agent signings where a player left a team, went to another team, okay, and some of the the highest contracts of those years. Um, because what I want to say is uh, free agency does not dictate NBA championships. Some of the best examples of free agency paying off quickly would be examples of like Robert Horry um, as one of the best support players of, you know, probably all time. Um, but you could look at, you know, Steve Nash, I think it was a year or two after he signed with the Suns, they started making it to the conference finals. Chauncey Billups, uh, two years after the second season of his tenure with the Pistons, they won a championship. But that first year is almost a wash. You're getting used to playing with your teammates. Um, you're adjusting to how the game's going to go with one another because there's so many dynamics. So let's look at something, if you mind. I got my list here. I want to discuss the f biggest free agent signings from 2011 along with the NBA champs. Uh, I'm going to have a few caveats here. LeBron James and Chris Bosh will not be on this list when they moved over to Miami. Uh, it was a sign and trade. LeBron James, when he moved from Miami to Cleveland, will not be on this list because, come on, man, it's an outlier. Uh, the dude is just an all-time great. Uh, and he was in his prime. He got similar pieces to what was in Miami placed in Cleveland. And so um, I can't I can't use that. And then... Uh, Kevin Durant to the Warriors. Uh, that's a team that just made the finals for the last two seasons. Um, so I'm not going to give him credit there. But let's take a look here at, so let me go down my list of who the free agent signings were for each year. So in 2011, uh, some of the highlights, Tyson Chandler to the New York Knicks. That didn't go too well. Vince Carter and Grant Hill to the Phoenix Suns. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, David West to the Indiana Pacers. Now, this one, listen, David West is one of those, like, glue players that this was prime David West, maybe a little bit past, so uh, I would definitely, that was a hard one to put on there, but he was one of the higher contracts. Uh, the champion that year, well, we're going to go ahead and let you know it's the Miami Heat. They beat the Oklahoma City Thunder. So the next season, 2012, we have... Uh, Gordon Drogic to the Phoenix Suns, Steve Nash to the LA Lakers, and Jamal Crawford to the Los Angeles Clippers. So stop right there for a second. Love me, Jamal Crawford. Love me, Steve Nash. Neither one of those guys made huge impacts with their teams. Did Steve Nash play more than like 20 games with the Lakers? I don't know. Uh, the Miami Heat won again that season. So then let's go to 2013 where we have Dwight Howard to the Houston Rockets. Andre Iguodala to the Warriors, and Josh Smith to the Detroit Pistons. Uh, Dwight Howard, post-Orlando, is just one of the hardest players to like in the NBA. Really weird stuff going on, but then again, you're playing with Kobe, and you had the Houston thing, and just, I don't, I don't know. Anyways, the Spurs took home the championship that year. Going to 2014, uh, and remember, these are the biggest contracts of players that moved teams. Channing Frye to the Orlando Magic and Pau Gasol to the Chicago Bulls. Yeah, that uh, that sucked. Um, I love Pau Gasol, but it didn't get us where we needed to go. The Golden State Warriors won their first championship that season. The next year, we have 2015 free agencies. Uh, LaMarcus Aldridge to the San Antonio Spurs. That is actually... Um, I don't know if that's a case of buyer's remorse or what, but you can tell that that was not the fit that they thought it was going to be. And then Wesley Matthews to the Mavericks, he hasn't really played much. Um, he was injured. That was the year that the Cavaliers brought their first championship home. Uh, let's move on to 2016 where Al Horford went to the Boston Celtics. Harrison Barnes moved on to the Dallas Mavericks and Chandler Parsons to the uh, Memphis Grizzlies. Harrison Barnes, that was kind of a weird one. I, I don't remember all the details around it. Al Horford to the Celtics, though, that's big. I mean, he has been, that has paid off in, in fold. And then Chandler Parsons, come on, dude. The Warriors took home the championship that year, uh, beating the Cavs. 
Then 2017, Gordon Hayward to the Celtics. We don't even have to recall that. Dude just, psh, like, two minutes into the game or five minutes into the game, something like that. And then Paul Millsap to the Nuggets. That's going to be a really, that's going to be an interesting one for us because um, the Nuggets are actually going to have an opportunity next year and the next few seasons to be a really good team. Uh, Warriors won that year. And then finally, 2018, really the only notable move was DeAndre Jordan to the Mavericks. And we know the Raptors just brought home the championship. So, first off, let me get a sip of water here. Oh, that's good H2O. Good H2O. The point is, you need at least the first year. Uh, you could put LeBron James on that list. You could put Kevin Durant on, on that list. I don't think those are fair examples. Um, because generally, your NBA teams are made through drafts, trades, and then free agency, um, outside of those two guys, historically free agency has been, we're already a championship team, uh, now let's add on to that level. So that's just kind of how I look at it. Uh, this NBA free agency is going to be really good. I mean, it's going to be really good this year. My predictions, just for a few players, I'm not going to go all out, but my predictions are uh, Kemba Walker will either stay with the Bobcats or go to the Lakers. Kyrie Irving going to the Nets. I think that's pretty obvious at this point. Um, Kawhi Leonard, I'm going to say he's going to the Clippers mainly because he did what he needed to do. He set out to win a championship for Toronto. Thanks, guys. Uh, Clay Thompson staying in Golden State. Kevin Durant, I, I really hope he stays um, because why, why go to the Knicks, which looks like an awful roster, or the Clippers where... They're going to have a year without you. It's going to be really tough for them to, to sell that because they're, they're in win-now mode. Because um, regardless of what happens, if the Clippers land one, if not two, uh, max players, they're in win-now mode. Uh, and especially next season with the Warriors looking like they're going to be down. Lakers are obviously the champion uh, favorites, I think, or like at least the Western Conference favorites. I want to end this basketball talk, though, with my hometown Bulls. And look, generally, I do not, um, I do not get too too emotional on camera, at least. What I am going to tell you is there is a good chance here in the next three minutes there will be some language dropped. So if you don't want to hear it, I would just skip on. Just a fair warning. But let's get to it. So, lifelong Bulls fan. Uh, before we get into this, let me just start with the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. We as fans are insane to think that the leadership in place, um, Pax and Foreman, are going to be able to get this thing turned around. We've had just little taste, little uh, you know treats, if you will, of little nuggets of what ifs, and it's been nice at times. I mean, it really has. The baby bowls. Uh, that seven-game first-round series against the Celtics, the conference finals appearance, Derrick Rose MVP year. It, I mean, we've had a lot of really special moments where it feels like, you know, this is something growing, and it just hasn't worked out. So I had no intention of talking about the Bulls on this video until within the past week, just a few really weird um, rumors and things like that came about. So let's talk first off about the possible Chris Paul trade. If they would have traded for Chris Paul from the Houston Rockets, I don't, like, I, it's not that I don't like Chris Paul. He is not where we are at in our rebuild. Uh, he gets us into the playoffs? Absolutely. Does he get us to the second round? Most likely, uh, depending on matchups and, you know, how what players we would give up. But that's it. I mean, that that's truly it. And it's nothing about he can't get there. It's this team is not ready. Then there's the other reports that everybody not named Lowry or Wendell uh, are pretty much available in trade talks. So we matched the offer sheet for Zach Levine last year against the Kings, and now this year he's um, tradable. That does not make sense to me. Just like bringing in Jabari Parker didn't make sense to me. Uh, so as Bulls fans, we have to take a moment and just understand it's not on the players. It's really not. Lowry is going to be great. Lowry! Wendell Carter, I have high expectations. 
I really like Zach on this roster. And then if you can't get behind the effort that Archie Diakno is bringing, I don't know what to tell you. Um, it looks like Jim Boylan has a good handle on the team. But I want to just throw out a few of the things that I would do right now if I were the Bulls. Just a couple of ideas. Let me get another sip of water here because this is going to be this is going to be where the rant gets real. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just getting over a cold. So here we go. First off, stop with this bullshit of we're going to trade Zach um, as part of an Anthony Davis package to move up to the number four. If you are going to trade a player in this draft, you trade for the number two spot and you take Ja Morant. It is that simple. This team is a point guard away from being on the upswing. Right now, they're kind of at that valley right here. They have a chance. It's just like in Sonic where you had to go back and forth. The Bulls have been stuck here. They have a chance to do the upswing here. It really comes down to making the right move. So one of my first suggestions would be you move up to get the number two pick and you go get Ja. Just that simple. Uh, another suggestion or another idea would be you go and talk to D'Angelo Russell. He's a free agent, and I think he would be dynamic with this team. He's much more polished than what John Morant would be right now, and it gives you, again, the opportunity to get into the playoffs. You have Lowry, Wendell, Zach, D'Angelo. Everyone else around that team is going to be really good at that point. But the problem is this is not an enticing place to play based on some of those issues. So those are the two main things I would look at. The only other free agent, the only other free agent that I would even get in a room with is Kemba Walker. Do not go out there and sign a bunch of guys we do not need. Like, I wouldn't talk to Clay Thompson. I wouldn't talk to Kevin Durant. I wouldn't talk to Kyrie Irving. I would talk to Kemba, and I would talk to D'Angelo. And if you can figure out a way to get with Memphis and get that number two pick without losing Lowry, Zach, or Wendell, I think you go and do it. I really do. I, I don't I don't see where that is a bad move. Um, but I think the focus this year has to be on a point guard. Those are my three picks that I think the Bulls need to go with. I also think it's time for just a leadership change because we need a different direction. How many rebuilds do we give Paxson and Foreman? Paxson helped the Bulls win some championships back in the day, and that will always hold a special place in our heart. But the fact is, what other organization has allowed these two levels of management have this many rebuilds? That's the question you got to ask yourself uh, as you watch this video. Where, where does it end? So I really hope that they go and do one of those three things. And guys, if you're watching, I am available for outside consultant work advisory work. If you're looking for a full-time uh, new staff member, we can talk about it. I'm not going to really, you know, beg for six figures, maybe high double figures or five figures, but that's it. So, I mean, but that's really it on this one. It, it's, we got to be smart this off season. A lot of potential, no Jabari Parker signings. Um, don't even talk to Deb Tobias Harris. Um, you know, I'd like to see Patrick Beverly. If he wants to come play in Chicago, bring him on in. So that's my NBA talk. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. What do you guys think? Put some comments below or tell me on Facebook. Uh, and I'm, like I said, excited. Let's see what happens in the draft. Let's see what happens in free agency. But, you know, keep in mind, like I said, it doesn't really uh, dictate who the champion that season is going to be. So thanks, guys. All right, guys, so I today would like to do a video game review on Crash Tag Team Racing. So let's go ahead and start with this. As you see the images across the screen of the game, I grew up with, in a time with a lot of great video game icons and logos. Mario, Link, Sonic. One character that's always held a special place in my heart is Crash Bandicoot. I still remember playing Crash Bandicoot 1 and 2 on the PlayStation 1. I still remember as a kid just being blown away by the game. You know, it felt a little bit more mature compared to Mario, felt a little bit more detailed and easier to navigate through compared to Sonic. Um, I was just always a really big fan of the series. So today, I'm going to talk about a PS2 game for Crash Bandicoot franchise, like I said, called Crash Tag Team Racing. And this is a franchise that 
kind of, you know, I think they fell off the map a little bit here. I know Crash Bandicoot recently had another game come out for the PlayStation 4, but this is a game I didn't even know existed. The premise of the game is Crash and some of the popular characters, both good and bad, are in an amusement park where there's an energy source. Uh, they're called Power Crystals. You need to collect those to move on, and eventually that's how you beat the game. There are several different themed areas inside the amusement park. You have to, again, those crystals help you unlock each area. Uh, and the themes, as you can see on the screen, it ranges from an adventure pirate style island to a space theme to a mummy theme. It's pretty cool. Um, and really, I, th I thought they did a good job on that piece. So each area has at least three tracks and some either have a battle or stunt arena. We'll talk about those in a minute. Each racetrack also has several smaller games you can compete and play on ranging from your basic racing to uh, shooting the opponents or shooting other cars to hit a score, um, shooting targets on the track, best lap, things like that. The game itself I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this was a simple game to play. Um, the driving and non-driving aspects did leave a little bit to be desired. If this was not a Crash Bandicoot series um, or title, I don't know that I would have played it. I'm gonna be completely honest. The non-driving piece has you as Crash going around the park, interacting with other park guests, other characters, and even a few fun side games and animations along the way. There are, of course, uh, ninja penguins that are trying to be adverse to you. One of the most important things to mention is that collecting coins scattered throughout the park is vital and it is actually the key way you are going to be able to move on through the game. You are able to move around the park but you do need those things on like tracks and areas. There are some fun obstacles and like I said those ninja penguins um, at first I thought they were really annoying and then afterwards realizing it's a good source to get coins was Pretty cool. Let's talk about the driving part though. This, this is probably what saved me from not finishing this game. First, most racing games fall into just a few simple categories. Uh, your classic realistic racing simulator, uh, something a little arcade-ish, and then something that's completely off the map. This is definitely the the last one, most off the map. Um, simple but very enjoyable. The controls are very straightforward. You have a drive, reverse, you steer, and then if you're um, combined with other players, you can shoot. The tracks increase in difficulty, and each one does have a different feel or theme. Some of them have uh, secrets you can unlock. I believe the creators did well in having a different layout or art for the tracks. Um, the really neat thing, really neat thing in my opinion, is the clashing. And that is in the title, so it's called uh, Crash Tag Team Racing. It's not, not necessarily in the title, but you do tag up and race together. And what you can do is, in the racing, when you're competing against other drivers, uh, basically clash or um, combine cars. Each driver has a special weapon, so when you do this, it combines both of them. And it's just a different feel to the racing genre, in my opinion. You can be the gunner or the driver. Uh, the downside to this, as you saw in the first part of this video, is you can be the gunner up until about five seconds before the end of the race, detach, and just drop into first place easily. So there is that kind of don't cheat, uh, be more honest aspect. Even when you have it on hard, um, that is something that's not hard sounded really weird even when you have it on hard it's not hard to do um so like i said each character unique weapon to them with limited ammo and there are specialty crates kind of thing of super mario world or super mario racing where it, you know you run over the crates or the the question marks and you get something special so for crash bandicoot they have something that gives you a little nitro you can throw a submarine a piano or a cow i think that's about it there may be some other things um Going back to the racing, that is the best part of the game, in my opinion, is the actual physical driving. The stunt and battle arenas are limited, but you do get the chance to, basically, you're the gunner the entire time in the battle arena. In the stunt arena, you're just driving the car, 
nothing special other than you're hitting ramps and you're trying to do barrel rolls and uh, just flips of all different directions. That is about it for the stunt mode. You have to hit a certain score and it is tough. Um, one thing to point out is that the scores are not easy to hit. So it did take me a little bit um, on the stunt to, to get that. Overall, this is not a very bad game. It's not a hard game, um, but it's not a bad game. There's plenty of ways to find efficient shortcuts or options to get through it. And, you know, it's not it's not the worst thing I've played. My biggest dislike is going to be stuck on the battle and stunt modes because there just wasn't so much to it. I thought it was a really cool idea. Um, every game I can think of, even going back to like the burnout games where they have that stunt mode, it's kind of hit and miss for me. So like burnout's really hard. This was kind of, it was simple, but the scores were a little bit harder to hit. So there you go. So what is the overall thoughts on the game here? Well, first off, I generally don't get to beat a full game for these videos. I try to uh, move quickly through them, just get enough to highlight it, and then I don't want to ruin the story. I beat this game. This is a tough one because I love the Crash Bandicoot franchise, and racing games like this with various side quests are generally fun. This game does look like it's going to have a little bit of replayability. It does look like it's something I could maybe play with friends, even, you know, younger kids who are just getting into video games if you have them. This game is not overly complicated. The buttons are pretty straightforward. The theme park idea is pretty cool. They're side games. Um, there's a lot to explore. It, it does have some really cool features, but that does not excuse the fact that there are some missing missing challenges to the game. Um, I don't know how many different style racetracks you can make. Credit to the creators for doing what they did. I'm going to give Crash Tag Team Racing a 2 out of 5. Yes, I'm going right on the middle here. This is a game that you have to like the franchise. You have to care about the racing aspect a little bit. And even more, you have to look past some of the lesser qualities and um, smaller feel to the game. But if you can move past that, for a PlayStation 2 game, this feels like it has really good replayability. Um, there is other things that you can unlock. And I, honestly, I'm just looking at this game, thinking to myself, do I want to try and 100% it or is just beating the basic game okay? I'm guessing I'm not going to 100% it because it is just a racing game. So that's Crash Tag Team Racing. Uh, I don't know. I, I, you know, even as I sit here and talk about this, I encourage you guys to play these games. I normally don't put games up that I wouldn't at least encourage you guys to try because one man's trash is another man's treasure. With this game specifically, there was a little bit more trash than treasure, and I think that someone who maybe isn't a Crash Bandicoot fan or a fan of the different styles of racing that this game offers, you might have a hard time with this. You really might. Um, and that's fine. Not all games are for everybody. But that is going to be my review here. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And like I said, get out and try. I mean, you can honestly find this game for under $5 at most resale game stores. I think I paid 4 So the PlayStation 2 has a gold mine of games like this where you have to look past a few of the things because of the limitations of the time. But again, there's just there's a gold mine out there. So that is it. Crash Tag Team Racing 2.5 out of 5. I'm going to shut up now and start playing some more. Well, it's early, I'm tired, and I could use some coffee. But instead of just using a regular percolator, let's try French press. All right, so we got this ready. Let's go ahead and throw in some coffee. Today's coffee is gonna be the delicious black silk, the good people of Folgers. Not exactly sure how much to throw in. I did a little reading online and really says based on what you like. I like my coffee a little bit stronger. You can hear the water heating up in the background. A lot of people have online just say the Phillips about the base here. So let's hope this works. 
So this is going to be the coffee mug we're using today, a X-Men comic coffee mug. You see, it is a big mouth. Well, we're just waiting, waiting for the water. We've got coffee cup, we've got the coffee and the French press ready to go, and then we got this delicious Snickers. Snickers! Satisfy yourself. I don't know if this works the same as the uh, candy bar. I do know that I like having some chocolate creamer with my coffee. So, just waiting. Just waiting impatiently. Alright, let's get us some, some hot water going in here. Stop it right at that line there. And then what we're actually going to do is leave this in here for just a minute so they can kind of brew. And then after a few minutes, we'll push this down and we'll have some coffee. All right, so it's been a few minutes. Let's go ahead and start pressing this bad boy down. I've only done French press like two or three times without adult supervision, so just not sure what to expect here. I guess a good sign is the water is hot. All right, let's see how this goes. Oh, it looks good. Let's pour it all out. We'll release until we start getting to the ground. And put that back there. All right, well, that's not too bad. A little frothy, if you will. A little bit of a, a frothy coffee. But that's it. Let me grab a spoon. Put a little creamer in here. That's it. As you get older, you're going to realize coffee is important. I figured uh, for this special episode, try and make myself some really good coffee, hopefully. And let's give this a minute to cool down and we'll try it. Well, let's give this bad boy a try. That's some good coffee. A little bit weaker than I like, but pretty delicious. So, as you can see, hair is wild. We're just waking up. Sometimes adults need coffee. Urban Girl Scott Media approves the uh, French press. Ducky T approves the, let's get the product placement here. Coffee made, if you're looking for someone to endorse, that's small term. But yeah, well guys, let's do some more stuff on this episode. Cause I got coffee. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the show this week. Gonna send you out here with a little bit of drumming. Uh, this is like take two or take three. Messed up a few times. We'll see if we can nail it.
messed up there at the end, but you got the point. Woo!